Hey everyone, I wanted to come out and share a little bit of encouragement for y'all. Oh wow, we've been through just a few days of rain. Noah brought the ark around and thought I was about ready to board and then it stopped. <laughs> the rain stopped. So surely, he's coming everybody, he's coming. So, you know, Paul did let us know that we need not know the day or the hour. We will know the season that Jesus is coming. Absolutely. We know that we are in the season. <laughs> We've done the math. Um, calculations and just look around, y'all. I know many don't believe we're in the very last moment right now, seriously. But we are. So despite all that, you know, we are the second exodus. And in the first exodus, you know, the Lord had been showing me this over and over and over where, you know, when they left that let my people go moment and they left, you know, right off, they started having battles that they had to fight along the way uh, to the point where some of them would think, my goodness, did, did God just send us out here to kill us or what? But yet God provided the whole way, right? And kind of a tower of fire by night for light and to guide them and keep them warm, as well as a cloud by day to guide them. Everything. He sent hornets. He sent everything to fight their battles for them. He, shoes that wouldn't wear out and clothes, food whenever they needed it, manna from heaven, right? Always. And, and still, they grumbled. And still, they weren't pleased or happy. And, and many of them wanted to turn back and go back to the world, to their old ways. I don't know. They faith, okay? God brought them out there for a test of faith. God wanted them to totally trust him, believe in him, and have faith in him, right? Faith pleases God, and faith's what he's looking for when he returns. Will he find faith yet? So this whole time, through their grumbling, it took 40 years instead of what could have probably have been 38 and a half years. And even during this time, we see that many, you know, had passed along the way. Their children were taught about God, and, you know, things kept going on as far as, you know, what they knew to do. And even they were, were doubting, is God real? Is God really doing this? <laughs> Are we really going to the promised land? Because remember, I mean, even after, you know, the golden calf and the Ten Commandments, and which represented the law, um, were given and everything was provided for, you know, um, they still had total doubt, total disbelief, and God kept saying, believe me, trust me, um, I'm going to provide, I'm going to get you there, and they had um, sent the scouts out before them, and they came back with a bad report, two of them, right, I said, oh no, we can't go there, there's giants on the land, we can't fight them, that's impossible, but then there were others that came back with good reports because they knew the Father. They believed in Him. They trusted Him. They had faith in Him. They said, surely we can do this. So they continued to go. And even all the way, you know, I do want you to know that even all the way to the Jordan, <laughs> they grumbled. Oh, they mumbled. They had disbelief that God was going to provide her. And maybe, you know, some of the thoughts that they possibly could have had was, is this real? kind of sound familiar are we gonna make it right and when I got to the river in the Jordan I looked at Moses and said now what disbelief right and Moses just looked at them and well as we know the word of God says that he struck his staff down the Jordan parted and they crossed over and that's exactly what's about to happen and we know the rest of the story there then we see that, you know, I've also been praying, Lord, you know, there's spiritual gifts that we have, like in First Corinthians 12, and many years, you know, I've been a, a prayer warrior, all kinds of things that I know the Lord has has poured on me, yet, you know, it takes a step in faith to get out there and, and to do these things sometimes, you know, concerned about what others will think or say, or things like this, right? <laughs> and praying about these gifts, and 
saying that Mark 16 we've been over several times when Jesus said that we would do greater things in his name right and then a few chapters before that I think it's Mark 13 or 14 we say that Peter himself okay there was a, a situation where, where Peter used to go to the temple every day uh, and in the morning that's what he would do because he loved the father so much and then there was this man sitting out front all the time he knew that he wasn't a Christian or he would be inside or a believer in the Lord Jesus let me say so he would be inside the temple not sitting outside so after a while Peter kind of figured well you know he got like some righteous anger Holy Ghost must have come come upon him he said no this man is out here to, to taunt the synagogue and to mock my God so he looked at him one day and he said in the name of Jesus I command you to get up and to walk and that's exactly what he did and so read that go study I think it's Mark 13 or 14 this did happen he used the name of Jesus too and Jesus hadn't finished on the cross yet so um, and they had called Peter before the judges and said, wait, you know, how did that happen? What happened? Peter just looked at them and said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, well, you used some name. There was some name that you kept saying. And he said, Jesus, <laughs> greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you know, I'm mad lipping that, but no sweeter name than the name of Jesus and no more powerful name than the name of Jesus and of course he probably got mocked and scoffed but uh, the name of Jesus was used before um, Jesus went to the cross so I see now how these spiritual gifts that we are given they're not for us okay they're to give away so my spiritual gift is praying or intercession or warrior or, or laying hands on the sick or whatever my gifts are um, then I'm to use them to glorify the Lord okay when he prompts me to wait and listen okay by his leading how we to do these things you know and gifts of knowledge and all these other things that can happen in the name of Jesus in which case you know we can block our own uh, healings or or things like this along the way not our salvation or anything because we have to be fully persuaded to begin with you know the Lord does tell us to ask and pray believing by faith that these things shall come to pass and they will it's just like you know, when you pray right to the Father asking and believing it's like Jesus you know interceding for us and you know a good daddy's never gonna turn down his beloved son right so we see that you know he will answer prayer in his way whatever way it is okay for his good and for his glory because this is his story so there's greater things in his name that we can do and we will do and we are there right now God has given us every provision we need in his word including his word that we need to use armor up you know it's all in there it's all in the scripture you know he's not a genie he'll answer it in his way in his will but we ask believing and we shall receive right that makes a difference and, Ooh, the lights did come on today even though there was no sun up there I did believe that the sun was shining <laughs> so it always is no matter what and there's a meeting in the clouds really really soon y'all so be encouraged know that <laughs> we are his bride he is our soon coming bridegroom we are all saved by grace through faith it's a free gift none of our works or our souls at least any man both faith is what he's looking for when he returns so we'll all just have to have that peace of God that surpasses all understanding and rest in him so come up believe trust our blessed hope Titus 2 13 promise 
His word is true. I believe him. How about you? <laughs> we say that this is Debbie from Texas saying peace out and Maranatha. Let's keep looking up because Jesus is coming. <laughs>